to introduce you to an idea about um, your symptoms and how they might um, accumulate over usually about a 72 hour period. Most people think about um, foods and things that they might be reacting to as an instantaneous reaction. This rarely happens in your body unless you've got a full-on IgE mediated allergy which gives you a full anaphylactic shock or hives or that kind of variety. So we're talking about other things like psoriasis, eczema, asthma, hay fever or migraines or IBS. These are all an accumulative kind of effect. So as you can see in the diagram, the base of everyone's cup will have some type of genetic influence. So your parents or um, someone in your family may have had something similar and unlike you've been taught, these aren't standalone kinds of symptoms. So psoriasis is a very, very similar response in your body to what asthma, hay fever and um, migraines do. Any of those are just have a different manifestation in each different person. The next one up is your external environment. So the things that you're responding to or reacting to externally. So this for you could be um, cleaning products, it could be your makeup, it could be uh, a certain grass or pollen or um, animal that, uh, dander that's in the air. And um, your body creates a response to that. That response can, again, accumulate over about a 72 hour period. And on the, on the flip side, can be taken away from your body and processed over about 72 hours as well. The next one is your internal environment. So your internal environment is anything that you're ingesting. These are things like allergens that, um, or intolerances that you might be having only a small response to. Uh, for instance, the, big, the top five when it comes to um, intolerances in Australia at this stage is gluten, uh, wheat, or wheat uh, lactose or cow's milk, and um, seafood or um, soy at this stage. So those five are your top five um, immune responses that could, ha could be happening in your body. The reason we've got to this stage in Australia is because uh, we're used to having things like wheat bix for breakfast, sandwiches for lunch, and pasta for dinner. Unfortunately, your response every single time that you respond to that is going to be more and more and more, and you're not going to give yourself that 72 hours to um, break down that, that immune complex that's formed. On a little sidetrack, immune complexes are very much like a magnet and iron filings. If you've ever done that experiment in the past, where you put those iron filings down and a magnet comes along and picks them all up and forms this tight kind of complex. What happens in your body is your immunoglobulins are very much like uh, iron filings flittering around your body. You eat that thing that you're intolerant to and it's like sticking a big magnet in and um, forming that complex throughout your body. To pull apart magnets from iron filings is a really difficult thing. It takes quite some time and your body can't handle that immune complex and can't pull it apart. It does actually take about 72 hours for that to die down. Um, to find out whether you're, not, you're intolerant to uh, foods in particular, the best place to go is to go and see a health professional and um, there, there is tests that are available to do that. The next one is about your gastrointestinal lining or your mucous membrane integrity. So all of the things that we just talked about with external environment and internal environment are going to have to come in somehow. That environment in which they come in and soak through, beard up your nose and your sinuses, down your gastrointestinal lining and into um, your mucous membrane there, or even up your girly bits and boy bits, um, uh, the integrity of that space and whether or not it can create a barrier is one of the most important things as to whether or not you're going to react to it. The, third, the next one up is all about your liver. Your liver and how it functions is one of the most important ways of getting those toxins and those immune complexes out of your body in a timely fashion. The last one, right on top of that cup, is stress. Stress will change everything. Your, response, your body's response to cortisol and adrenaline will um, have a flow of effect for the majority of those symptoms. The reason for that is stress takes up a whole bunch of nutrients that um, are really important for every other pathway that happens in that, um, that symptom cup. And all of them will be expanded and pushed up towards the top of that cup if you've got more stress added in on the top. 
So as you can see, each layer is going to make a difference on how your body either flows out into your symptomology or um, is minimised into that nice green zone. So your exposure to each of those different things or the optimum um, health of each of those different contributing factors are really important for whether or not you actually flow over into the effect of your symptoms, psoriasis, eczema, hay fever, asthma, migraines or IBS, um, or minimise so that you're in that nice safe zone and you don't have that happening every single day. And that's the allergy cup.